Hey everyone, I've got another synthesis challenge for you. So take a look at this. We've got three small molecules, uh, numbered one, two, and three, and we want to use those to make four. So whatever you can do, looks like we've got a couple of rings to build. This is an interesting looking molecule, and we've got these uh, as our starting materials. So uh, take a few minutes and see if you can figure this out. Okay, so let's try to think of a strategy. Let's look at these three molecules, one, two, three. Uh, we've got some carbonyls. Uh, this this uh, molecule looks very interesting. This looks like our, our, uh, very, uh, our very typical uh, Michael addition electrophile. So definitely we're thinking uh, enolate chemistry, right? We know that we're, or you know, we, this is something that we could try, certainly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with number one right here. And uh, let's start using uh, enolate chemistry to tack these things uh, together. Now uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to use number two first. Um, so we're going to use uh, yeah. We'll, we'll just say we're going to use number two. And uh, let's use methoxide because uh, we don't want to mess with this ester right here. Uh, th th this way, there's not going to be any funny business at the ester. But uh, the thing is, we, uh, we, right, we're used to uh, enolates attacking carbonyls. However, they can also do SN2 on alkyl halides. So uh, we can say that uh, we're, the, definitely the enolate is going to form there. Uh, this is probably why we're going to start with this, by the way, because we've got this carbon is adjacent to two carbonyls. So it is certainly the easiest uh, spot to enolize out of all these molecules. And, um, and it's definitely going to enolize there because it is adjacent to uh, both carbonyls. So the pK is quite a lot lower at this location. So we're going to enolize there and we're going to attack number two right there, just basic SN2. So uh, let's just go ahead and put those fragments together. I'm not really going to show any mechanisms here. I don't have uh, quite enough, uh, quite enough room to show all that. So we're just going to show the transformations themselves. And, uh, and so here we got boom, and then uh, next carbon, and then the pi bond, and then that. So this fragment is uh, right here, right? We kicked off, uh, kicked off the bromo group, but we've got this fragment attached to uh, where the enolate, uh, the, the carbon, uh, right, this carbon and the enolate attacked right there. So this is the new bond we formed right there. So we can attach uh, molecule three in similar fashion. Let's react with three, and uh, again, let's just stick with methoxide to keep things simple. And uh, this is actually a, a Michael addition, right? We know that because of this alpha beta unsaturation here, uh, that an enolate can attack right here at the beta carbon, kick this pi bond up, kick that uh, pi bond in the carbonyl up. So hopefully we remember Michael addition. But um, so it's, it's going to uh, enolize at the same location, right? Certainly it's still going to enolize there. We're still adjacent to two carbonyls. That is certainly the most acidic. Uh, location. So let us show what is going to happen there. Uh, and so let's take, it's going to attack right here, right? So we've got boom, and then uh, another carbon, and then another carbon, and then the carbonyl will reform after tautomerization, and we are there. So we've got a, a lot, it looks like a little bit of a mess here, but now here's the kicker. We're going to keep going with our with our enolate chemistry, right? We're going to do some more enolate chemistry, but we, we've run out of our fragments here, So uh, and we have enough carbons, we just need to work with what we've got. So let's do some intramolecular enolate chemistry. Let's do an intramolecular aldol condensation, where do we think we're going to be able to pull this off? Well, we've got a carbonyl here and we've got a carbonyl here, and we have the potential to make a six-membered ring, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use, let's uh, always methoxide, right? Let's keep with that. So uh, just to be clear, uh, we're going to attack, uh, take this and it's going to attack right there, okay? So let's show that. Let's just draw the six-membered ring because that is what we are forming. And let's say that this carbon is this carbon here. Uh, there's going to be a pi bond, right? We know that uh, condensation, uh, we're going to end up with that pi bond there. So this oxygen is gone, right? This attacks here. 
uh, kicks that pi bond up, and then when it attacks again, it's just going to kick off the hydroxide. So we're there. We've got this uh, carbonyl is from over there, and then boom, 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 boom. This is the carbon that. Uh, so this carbon has two other things on it. So we got to show those. So uh, we're going to go uh, one, two and then the pi bond there and there, and then also CO2 ME. So one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four, and then the uh, CO2 ME. So that was kind of the, that, that's maybe the trickiest part is to be able to see after doing that enolate chemistry that we're gonna do that intramolecular aldol condensation. We're gonna get that six membered ring. Okay, so we're, we're looking, we're in pretty good shape here, right? We've got this whole portion of the molecule up there. Looks like we still need to do another ring closure. Um, and uh, we're, we know that maybe we can do some more enolate chemistry to do that. However, we're gonna need oxygen functionality here. We've got this alkene, but we need this carbonyl. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, how are we going to get uh, turn this this alkene into into a carbonyl? Well, here's here's a little trick. So what we we may know is that um, with ozonolysis, right? We know ozonolysis cleaves pi bonds and makes carbonyls. But it's not always so obvious to uh, to realize that what we can do with that is take a terminal alkene and just convert it into a carbonyl, right? Because we'll get a formaldehyde byproduct and, and we'll we'll get rid of that. But we're going to end up transforming that alkene uh, into uh, into a carbonyl. But we do have to say one thing about this in this particular instance. We do have another pi bond there and we don't want to mess with that. Now, luckily, this pi bond is quite a bit more reactive because if you'll see this, th this is conjugated here with that carbonyl, right? So because this pi bond is delocalized, it's not as reactive, it's not as receptive towards ozonolysis. Now, if you push it, it will go, right? But if we do, if we do ozonolysis with very mild conditions, meaning if we do ozonolysis but we're titrating one equivalent at, uh, you know, minus 78 C, right? We're going to do this cold. We're going to put this in the dry ice bath and we're going to keep it real chilly. Um, and, uh, and, and again, one equivalent. And then follow that with reductive workup, right? As soon as we've got that uh, one equivalent in there, we're going to, to going to stop it. So uh, once again, what we're saying is that we are going to do ozonolysis, but we need to keep it cold because we want to react here and not here. So that's why we keep uh, we keep things pretty cold. So let's show the product of the ozonolysis. And uh, okay, so boom, boom, boom. And there is our new carbonyl. Right, so we've converted that terminal alkene to the ketone, and now we're ready to just wrap things up with yet another uh, round of enolate chemistry. So always methoxide. We are going to uh, we're going to de we're, we're going to enolize here, and then we're going to attack that ester. So let's finish things up. Uh, here's our six-membered ring, and. <clears throat> Uh, so we're going to go, uh, yeah, now we're forming this five-membered ring, and so that carbonyl stays as it is, and we're going to go from the ester, right, the ester, if we, if we, if an enolate attacks an ester, it just, pop, the carbonyl reforms and we pop off alkoxy, right? So let's put that, uh, let's put that, um, carbonyl there, and then honestly, uh, this is almost certainly going to tautomerize to give four, we know that um, that the keto tautomer typically is favored in, in an equilibrium, but there are, are instances where the enol tautomer um, is is preferred uh, due to resonance. So certainly, if the enol is um, is aromatic, that is going to be preferential over the keto tautomer. Tautomer, but honest, honestly, here uh, we've got a lot of resonance here from this oxygen to the pi bond up to, into that other carbonyl. So um, it may not be dramatic, you know, a drastic dominance, but um, I think that's going to be pr uh, prefer the enol tautomer. And we're at number four. So uh, what did we do? Again, you know, we we did a lot of enolate chemistry, and honestly, enolate chemistry is 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 ubiquitous in organic chemistry. You do so much 
enolate chemistry, you've got your aldols and your Michaels and your Robinsons and, and your Claisons and all that stuff. So um, it's it's a really good thing to practice. It's extremely useful for uh, for for forming new carbon carbon bonds. So we just we did um, right we did well really an SN2 here, and then we did a Michael addition, and then we did an intramolecular aldol condensation. Then we got sneaky and we did this ozonolysis with very mild conditions to get the carbonyl here without tampering with this uh, alkene, with that pi bond there. And then one more intramolecular, um, I guess you'd call that a, well, no, it wouldn't be a clasin, but we're attacking that uh, ester there. So one more intramolecular enolate chemistry and we've gotten to our product. So uh, that, was, uh, that, was a, that was a bit of a fun one and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.